Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Artcasters number 185. And as usual, we've got a special guest, Scott Campbell, and we'll get to him in a minute. Um, but first, we've got some some uh, important business to get out of the way. Uh, uh, I guess we should introduce ourselves first. Um, so if you're new to this channel, uh, I'm Scott with Surfworks Art Labs. You're on my channel, so you probably know who I am, unless it sounds like Scott's trying to send some people our way, too. So if you're coming from Scott Campbell's uh, uh, world online, then, uh, then welcome. Um, so, uh, this is a show we do every week between me and my co-host Josh, we, we'll get to in a minute, but, uh, Josh and I are both involved in something called the 100 days of main comics. And we have a Kickstarter going right now for an anthology that features Josh, myself and 26 other awesome, talented artists. And, uh, it is on Kickstarter. There's a link in the description to this video. Um, yeah, just if you click that, uh, that will send you to the, the Kickstarter. And uh, yeah, it's basically what the 100 Days of Make Comics it is, is. It is a challenge where you spend 30 minutes a day every day working on your own personal comic book project, and then you let people know about it on social media, and you do that for 100 days straight. And if you complete that, then you're eligible to be in the anthology. This time around, this is our second anthology. Uh, this time, the theme is Mythical Creatures. It's called werewolves and unicorns and other mythical creatures so uh that's kind of what we're working with and everyone's got a story that has to do with that and uh man there's just some incredible stuff there so um definitely want to check that out and uh so now that you know who i am and and what kind of uh what, what we got in kickstarter let me turn it over to my co-host josh hey josh how's it going is josh hey, hey sorry about that uh, the, my, my son uh it's summertime and so he was uh <laughs> He's kind of like sneaking out of bed. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, um, you can find my stuff at uh, joshuakemble.com and uh, quarterlystories.com, which will take you to uh, the graphic novel that I'm about four pages away from finishing. So, yeah, so that's that's worth checking out as well. All right, and uh, so now, as we mentioned, we've got a returning guest, Scott Campbell. Every time we've got have him coming on, it's like a like a major new thing that he's got going on, and tonight is no different. So we're going to kind of talk about we're going to talk to Scott about that. Um, uh, the big big news, I guess, with Scott is he's recently retired and uh, from commercial work anyway, and moved from Portland to Nevada. And I, I'm really curious to see you know because he had he was like kind of a staple of Portland, and he's you know kind of world famous window painter over there and everything and uh, kind of hung, hung up his brushes and uh, moved out to Nevada. So I'm really curious to see what's going on with that. And I just wanted to talk about, I know I'm getting older and I, that's something that's always on my mind is, is retirement and as uh, working artists and people that kind of usually work for ourselves um, <laughs> is that's possible for us to do. And also just as artists, you know, as far as the art part, the, you know, do, can we really ever give that up? And I don't think we really want to. So, so I'm really curious, uh, and maybe uh, Scott can kind of help uh, provide a roadmap for, for me and for others who, who are thinking ahead to that. So, hey, Scott, how's it going? Good, good, really good. So, uh, yeah, I mean, do, first of all, do, is there anything that you want to pitch or anything you want to talk about, any uh, websites or YouTube channels? And I mean, your YouTube channel, there is a link in the description of this video for anyone that wants to check that out. And you've got a lot of content on your YouTube channel, so. Yeah, I just, um, I guess I would say that, you know, I'm kind of in limbo right now. I'm waiting, you know, trying to get set up. I'm living with my uh, wife's sister in her house here and uh, in Fallon, Nevada. And so th there's just a lot to do. We probably won't get our new house for six to eight months, but I am going to get something set up so I can make weekly videos of, I want to get into like really specific character design and maybe some stuff on lettering too and stuff, but mainly just building characters from scratch and focusing on a particular character and showing how I go through the whole process. Nice. So, but right now I'm just kind of posting goofy videos every week, you know, just here in Nevada doing this and that and probably some sketching videos. But uh, so, yeah, I would just maybe promote my uh, YouTube channel, which is just, I think it's just Scott Campbell or Scott Campbell Window Painter. Or if you just Google Scott Campbell, Scott with one T, Campbell like soup. Yeah, and uh, there is, like know, I said, there, there is a link. Stuff. We just put a link in. So there's a link in the yeah. description. So that's probably the easiest way to get to it. 
Um, yeah. So, so what, what kind of prompted the move? Is this something you've been planning or something that kind of came up recently? Because, you know, uh, I, yeah, I was just, watching your channel and it seemed like, you know, you were, you were just doing the window painting, you know, business as usual. And all of a sudden it was like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm giving that up and I'm, I'm moving out to Nevada. So. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we've been planning it. My wife, it's been planning it for about three years and I've got more active in the whole idea of it for about two years. And basically we just, my wife, you know, she's, she's turning 65. I'm going to be 64 and uh, she's leaving her job. She's retiring. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just don't have the income really to, to want to support a life in Portland Our property taxes in Portland were uh, 4,000 a year. Wow. So my property taxes here are zero. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how many windows do I have to paint to make $4,000 just to pay my property taxes? And so, yeah, just we want to retire in, in, as far as work. We're not retiring. I mean, I'm going to yeah. be doing other stuff too. I'm going to be learning how to weld. I'm going to make, you know, sculptures and I want to make solar powered waterfalls. I want to make distress signs, you know, like, uh, you see these on uh, Instagram sometimes, these sign writers that make distress signs. And, like, it'd be cool to make a sign like, you know, uh, Highway 50, America's Loneliest Highway. You know, it's it goes through Fallon. And just all kinds of stuff. I'd like to do a, a, a UV3T funhouse uh, around Halloween, my own. You know, oh. I've always worked for other people building those. I like to do my own Halloween walkthrough, you know, chroma depth, UV3D and... There's just, I mean, I have so many plans, but right now we're, like I said, we're just kind of in limbo. And so it's really, you know, I'm anxious to get to that stuff, but there's just a lot of things to do to get settled yeah. and to get our house going and all that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about having all this time to make some really good instructional videos. I mean, I know people really like what I've done on YouTube. I have a thousand videos and you know 130 actual formal tutorials but this is going to start off at lesson one and we're going to start over and like the first one i'm going to do is uh, how to do a how to paint a cartoon rattler you know i'm going to have you know uh references of rattlesnakes and just and the whole idea of how to build a build a character because really i'm more of a character to designer than anything like you guys blow me away like the stuff you do i mean you have so many skills that i don't have i'm really just all about character design and well i, I wouldn't say that know. i mean you've got a lot of skills too like i, I definitely want to get into like the the you know the art cars we talked a little i'm just curious what the what the fate of dark ride was because i never I, I wasn't sure i actually i did sell it i didn't sell it for a lot but like I originally wanted, I was trying to sell it to somebody in the haunt industry. I thought for sure someone would want this to promote their haunted house and, and to have it as a, yeah. you know, come see America's scariest vehicle, you know, blood waterfall. And yeah, I don't know if you saw the videos I made of it. I, that, I, I don't know, know if I, I saw it totally complete, but I definitely saw it was, no, I think I did see it complete. Yeah. There's a, like a, like a music video of it and then right. also a video of how people react to it. But I did sell it. I'm going back to Portland to get it. And then my son's going to drive it to um, Arizona is where it's going to end up. Cool. So uh, Douglas, see. Arizona, there, there's an art car museum there. in Douglas, Arizona. I don't know how it's kind of a by appointment sort of thing, but the guy's got a bunch of crazy art cars. And so I sold it to him and uh, my son's going to drive it down and, so I'm kind of done with that. I'm done with the art car thing for now. I'm, I'm done with being a uh, entertainer and the yeah. whole trying to be famous sort of thing. I really, I love teaching. I want to keep teaching on YouTube and I have a Patreon channel too. And which is pretty cool. I make a couple hundred bucks a month off Patreon, which is nice. YouTube, I don't make that much, but I keep doing it. I make about 60 bucks a month, which is crazy because I have a thousand videos and I've been at it for several years, yeah. but I don't really care. I, I just, I love making videos. I love, yeah, that's love the creative process. 
That's yeah, I'm in the same boat. And that's what I keep telling people because, you know, I mean, I do kind of the same thing. You know, I try to teach like comics or whatever, and I am going to do that. That's what I'm trying to get into doing because I'm, I'm planning to do a whole series just basically from start to like from basically coming up with a concept for a comic to all the way to, to printing the comic and every step in between. But, you know, I keep getting freelance work, which I can't really complain but I keep, keep like I want to I want to work on my own stuff, and YouTube's a big part of that. But I always tell people with YouTube because I mean, some people just think, oh yeah, you can just get on YouTube and you make videos and you make money and and you get a, a million subscribers and it's 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 easy, um, and <laughs> and it's not, man. I, I tell people you you really have to love doing it because you'll you'll just burn out or give up because if yeah. you you know. And I've right. talked to I've actually made it. Oh, go I, was ahead. Just, I was just going to say I was talked to I was talking to an artist uh, at um, at Phoenix Fan Fusion, Brandon Dayton. Who I'll have to reach out to him and see if I can get him on the show. But but you know he 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 kind of came out the gate pretty well and like he had just in a short amount of time it got like twenty thousand subscribers. But um, I guess you know I was talking to him and he was it can't cool. happen. Yeah, but he was kind of saying that uh, that yeah, he just wasn't feeling it. So it's like, man, I wish yeah, I wish I had that. But but you know, <laughs> not it's it's just not you got to I think you really have to love doing it. So yeah, but um, yeah, anyway. cause, yeah, it's really true. I I just I've probably made about three thousand videos in my time, and I have I have over a thousand that are public, and I have another. 300 on my channel that are unlisted because mm -hmm. when i when i started branding myself as a window painter i took off a lot of the really weird stuff and you know the art car stuff and the extremo the clown stuff there is a little bit of that too but when i started to get more serious about branding i had i unlisted some videos but um but then i do have a I did have a channel for the van too, and I have a sketching channel, which doesn't really hasn't taken off, but still I've got almost 500 subscribers on my, my sculpture channel. And I've got like 250 on my sketching channel, but the videos get very few views. But, yeah. um, I find that with mine too, compared to the amount of subscribers I have, my, I get pretty low views. <laughs> but, yeah, but once I get settled, I'm going to be in heaven, man, because yeah. I don't have to paint windows commercially. Yeah. I could I could spend a week making a video. I mean, I was making sometimes three videos a day and I get obsessed with it and but I discovered that it's better to just make one a week and give people time to, you know, watch it, enjoy it and and but then I would be posting too many videos and it, you know, it's it would be too much and it would be like kind of like you know, people, it was too much for people. Yeah. So I'm going to try and just do like one a week, you know, and uh, I quit for a while making them because of the move. But once everything's set up, it's going to be, it's going to be so nice to try to, to, to make some really good instructional videos. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see that because I'm, you know, obviously I'm all about character design and lettering. So if you do that too, I, I mean, I'm, I'm getting into doing my own fonts and stuff too. That's another thing I'm, I want to kind of move forward with, but uh, um, yeah, I mean the, the lettering you do is pretty awesome too. So, um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's going to be a, a different, a, kind of a different thing. So I'm, I'm curious to see how you go about it. Cause one of the things I liked about when you were doing the commercial stuff was just, you're just kind of out in the field and you're interacting with people as they kind of come by and you never know kind of who's going to come by and all that stuff. So that's always fun too. But, but yeah, it would be cool to kind of get, you know, uh, just, I mean, you have such a, such, uh, you know, vast experience doing this kind of thing. Um, it, it, you know, I think now that you've retired, I mean, there's, there's a big hole to fill, which, which I'm curious about. So, so when you leave Portland, I mean, did you have like a protege or somebody that you've kind of like, said hey you know all because all your clients they're probably looking for people to pinpoint windows was there anyone that you kind of turned it over to or anything like that or uh not completely there there's a lady um her name's uh sherry she lives in bend oregon but that's you know pretty far from portland yeah but she would come into portland and do stuff and sometimes i'd give her work that i didn't want to do and then she'd want to go on vacation she'd give me some work so <laughs> i tried to 
I called her and told her, yeah, I'm leaving. I can give you all this work. And she's like, well, I just turned 60, so I'm not doing as much either. <laughs> so there's kind of really a big, a big void in Portland. Yeah. So and it's, it, it's hard. The people that are as good as me and better don't live in Portland. Right. There's right. a guy, there's people that follow me all over the world that, could easily do what I do. They could step in. There's a guy in Greece. He's in Greece though. He's not in Portland. Yeah. And he is like incredible. He can copy me and he does other stuff. He does airbrush stuff. He's, he's really an incredible, you know, and he's one of my students. He's one of my subscribers, but um, I think his name is Salonis the Vicitus, but he is just so good. And then, uh, there's a guy named Jack Fleming who is really incredible. I mean, there's these people out there and it's really flattering because these people are like, you know, telling me stuff like, oh, I got all the Home Depot stores because of you. I didn't even paint windows until I saw your channel. And they're like making windows, <laughs> they're making all their income off window painting now. And some of them are really, really good. And they're and, you know, I think as far as character design, there's not a lot of people I say can say that are better than me. Yeah. But as far as overall window painters, there are people that are more versatile and you know that especially with the lettering and stuff, you know, there's people that do like like incredible these big bold graphics and you know fluorescent lettering and drop shadows and but um I don't know, I just I just want to support people there's this one guy from Ireland that's a, a patron of mine on, on p the Patreon channel. It's really funny. He just sent me a link to a page. And this has happened more than once. It's a place in Ireland. And they do walls and murals and window painting. But when you go to look at their window painting examples, it's my stuff. Huh. Oh. <laughs> It's my it's, is it actually <laughs> pictures of work that you've done or just copying what you're doing? No, my pictures. <laughs> my actual photographs off my... Oh, my God. I, don't, I think they got it off Pinterest or something. <laughs> and, but I don't care. I mean, I I'm what like, I, whatever. I've heard about people... More power to you. But then when they go to paint it, can they copy it? What are they, they going to do? I guess they could copy it. You know, yeah. but still, yeah, because I did have somebody do that before, and I, I did call them and say, I, and then on the Facebook page, somebody did that too. You know, they posted, they posted a bunch of work they did. Window, it's the window painting artist group, <laughs> and somebody, um, said, Oh, look at my work, and, and one of them was mine. <laughs> uh, I was like, but that time I did like, you know, because people, everybody knows me on the window painting Facebook. They, you know, they, they follow me. They watch my uh, channel and stuff. So they all know me and they, if they see something and it looks like mine, they know it's, you know, oh, that's Scott's. Why is he putting that there? Yeah. But it's sort of flattering. I don't know. I have so many stories about stuff that just blows me away. Like there's a place in uh, New York called Colossal Media. Have you ever heard of them? No, Colossal Media. Yeah, they um, they do uh, giant murals. They climb up on the walls and they do like totally realistic pictures of people. And so they get a hold of me. They go, "We want you to make a logo for us. We want a cartoon, you know, rat, you know, or and something, you know." And I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't like doing it and this that. Here. But they're like, we grew up in Portland, man. We love your stuff. We know all about you, and we're big fans. And we got to have a Scott Campbell. And but it's so flattering because these guys are like so incredible. Yeah. But the thing I always forget is that we're. I think, and I talked about this on other shows. Everybody's so different, but you get used to what you can do. Like yeah. I look at your guys' stuff, and I'm like, what the hell? I could never do that. I don't have the brain. I don't have the the skill set, and I haven't put my years in to do that and but but then those same people like you or maybe somebody else might look at me and go wow that's incredible his character designer is windows but you get used to what you're good at 
Yeah. 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 You know, but yeah, but I would say you know if I was going to say there, it looks like there's a big. Uh, big need for window painters to kind of fill your shoes in Portland if you're good at, but, but I was going to say, if you move out there, it sounds like the cost of living is, it might not be a good decision. You know? Yeah. that. Yeah. Back to that. We just decided we want to not have to, I wonder, it costs I wonder us Kevin, so much to live there. I wonder if Kevin and the traffic there is really, there's a, there's a lot of traffic there now and just, it's getting really crowded. Yeah. And there's like homeless everywhere, living on the streets. I guess that's all over America now, but yeah. it's really, it was just, <clears throat> and we lived here before. We we lived here for 10 years when we were younger. We lived here before we went to Portland because Audrey's Shoshone Indian. And so we live on the Indian reservation. And it's like, if you want to build something, you don't have to worry about permits and codes oh. and, you know, and it's just, we live on the Indian colony, which is right near, you know, it's, everything's close <clears throat> and I want to just have fun. I want to like, like I said, make videos and draw and do sketches all the time and, and just post stuff on Instagram and, and not have to worry about painting like in the winter when it's 15 degrees yeah. and, yeah. you know, or, or if it's raining and I got to figure out juggling the jobs. And <clears throat> so yeah, but I, I do when I am here and I look at I look at stores like I look I posted something of of Les Schwab. It was just a Les Schwab and Fallon, Nevada, and now all these windows they're just blank, and it's like, oh my god, I just I could like do so much with that. <laughs> <laughs> they're, gonna, they're gonna pull you back in. <laughs> yeah, I think if somebody came to me somehow from Reno or Fernley or one of the, or Fallon and came to me and said, Oh, we heard you're here and we want this and we'll give you a, a bunch of money to do this and this and this. And, you know, I could do it during a nice weather. I'd probably go do it, yeah. but I'm not going to start over. I don't want to go out and like hand out flyers and say, Oh, I'm a window painter. Yeah. And then they're like, That's what? $200, you know, or, you know, like I don't want to, I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I just want to have fun now and, and create, create things and i want to get a drone do you guys know anything about drones no they said they look cool though but that i could when you were doing that that would have been totally cool if you had a drone for the kind of kind of stuff you were doing because it was so the problem with me is everything i all my videos and stuff are pretty much in like the underground layer and they're pretty much you know so i don't have any you know use for uh, you know a drone no indoor drones Scott. Yeah. But, but what you were doing and that would the drone would have been perfect you know, I yeah, and I do want to do your car as you go to the go to the next thing, and oh man, that would have been great. Well, and you, and you were saying earlier that you know you really enjoy the, my interaction with people. Well, I could do that here too, yeah. but it might not have anything to do with window painting, right? Right. 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 <laughs> but I want to like I want to do some music videos, maybe some dancing. I thought of doing a country music video or something. You know, just weird shit and just yeah. like have fun. It's like like I'm painting a rattlesnake, but I could have the drone going over Rattlesnake Hill or I could like maybe interview someone. Hey, have you ever been bitten by a rattlesnake? Or do you know, you know, or just, yeah, I could, I just want to create really fun, creative videos. Yeah. But he'll do that. But as far as the instructional part, I want it to be more, you know, tight and have a format. I kind of gonna film it, and then I'm gonna have the window where I can talk about what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm wondering. You know. I also wonder if there's an opportunity. I mean, obviously, when we do YouTube, we want to put out content for everyone, you know, pretty much free of charge. But but there there might be some some interesting opportunities for premium content because I know like you've got your you've got your eBooks that you sell and everything, and I think it sounds like those have done pretty well for you and everything. So I'm wondering if you know if through the videos you could have another course, like you could actually take, take like even go further into some of those videos and either do additional videos. Or well, that's what I do with, yeah. that's what Patreon is for. Okay. Okay. Oh, well there, there you go. That's perfect. Yeah. So I, I do, I get some action on Patreon, but I'm still, 
you know, I get social security now and Audrey gets it. And my sister is going to be moving up here when we get our house and she gets social security. So between the three of us and not having to pay for all the expenses in Portland, we're fine. I mean, I don't really have to work at all. Nice. So I can just play and like, you know, I, I make about, I think I make about three or 400 off, you know, the eBooks and YouTube and Patreon. I make a couple of hundred off Patreon, but I mean, I'm just going to keep doing it because it's fun. It's cool. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, and so, but the thing about YouTube is it never goes backwards. It's just like, it's just like, I make about, about $740 a year off YouTube. But the yeah, year I before, I, yeah, it just kind of going a little bit, but now it's going back up as far as what I'm pulling in from YouTube, which isn't a lot, but I mean, you know, yeah, but it's really about, it's just about being happy and like, yeah, I just, it's, there's so much stress just being a human. Yeah. <laughs> it's like hard, you know, so it's like now I have an opportunity. You know, it's it's weird. I'm going to be 64. It's like in six years, I'll be 70. It's like I want to start getting more creative. And yeah, I always having, so. I mean, uh, it's it's good for me to kind of look at what you're doing, because one of my biggest fears, because the older I get, the more we were just talking about, you know, you know, these amazingly talented uh, young kids that are just just doing amazing stuff. And I always worry that. I'm going to become irrelevant, but, um, but I don't know. I mean, I, I, but I also feel like I'm a kid at heart. So, I mean, even though I might not know exactly like what's super cool with the, with the young kids, I mean, I still think at least right now, I still think my stuff is relevant and cool and people, people are, you know, can get into it. But, but, you know, I always kind of worry about that. And I'm like, like, cause there's no, like, you know, I work for myself, so there's really no like retirement. Now, I mean, I don't want to retire like just like you. I mean, I'm always going to be creating as long as I possibly can. But is am I going to get to a point where where people aren't going to want what I create? And you know, so I'm you know one of the things I'm trying to do now is get more into digital products so I can have some passive income that would hopefully just kind of build. Because you know, who knows? And maybe I get to the point where I get arthritis or something like that, and I can't really draw anymore. So I'm trying to figure out what can I do that that I can have some kind of some stream of income coming in when I you know when I do get older. But I'm one of my biggest things is am I just going to like age out and people aren't going to really be into what I'm doing? But but then I look at it, just amazing artists like all the Disney like like when the nine old men were, um, you know, they're like in their 80s, they were in their eighties or nineties or whatever. And they're still doing beautiful work and stuff and the stuff that you do. And so, so I guess I shouldn't worry about that too much, but, but I do think about it. Well, it's like, as you get older, you do lose your hearing and mentally I'm not as sharp. And, you know, my wife and I, we always joke about, you know, she'll say something and it's like, I hear something totally different. I repeat back something totally yeah. different. And it's really starting to happen, you know, where you're slowing down. But as far as creatively, I'm getting better. Yeah. Because it's what I do all the time. And I'm, for some reason, that part of my brain is not getting less. It's getting stronger. That's good. Like and every time I make a video, I learn more or every time. Like I've gotten a lot better at drawing in the last year and a half because I've been studying and practicing. And like right now I'm taking a, I had to stop some of the lessons, but I'm taking a course from Aaron Blaze. Okay, yeah. He, I follow him. And, uh, it's a character design course. Mm -hmm. And he's a uh, you know, great Disney animator, uh, director of you know, like Brother Bear and different films. And um it was so incredible doing his course. It was like, it was really cheap too. It was on sale. It was like $49 or something. Whoa, but, I got to check that out. <laughs> but you download it and it's like, it's like 20 hours or something. Oh, wow. It's really fun. That's, and it's that's got awesome. like 18 lessons or something. And he talks about line of action and, you know, and different things. And just, God, it's just, just doing that. Because I have a, even though I'm really, uh, obsessed with teaching i'm so obsessed with learning now and it's like there's so much i want to learn and yeah and it's such a great time of life because now i don't have to worry about the money so much and i can like 
like once we're settled and everything and I'm making my weekly videos and doing all that stuff and making sure I'm recycling and getting things around the house done, you know, I can, I can work on that course again. And, yeah. and, and it's just so incredible to, to learn. And like, I, I could spend, so I could spend a year just drawing, yeah. just practicing and drawing hands and, yeah. And trying to learn how to draw feet or clothes or folds and clothing or because I never did a lot of that stuff. You know, I was always about like with windows, you're concerned about showing the impact like, you know, monster cell. And you got King Kong there or Godzilla shooting, shooting a flame or something. Monster cell. It's all really, you know, big and bold. Not, you don't get into details and stuff. And so I missed a lot of that. Like you guys, you know there's so many things you can draw. It's just probably out of the top of your head because, or it's a quick reference. You can do it because you've done it so much. And so I'm excited about doing that. I don't, I don't really want to be an illustrator. I want to just keep, I want to be it's a character designer. Wouldn't. It's funny that you don't consider yourself an illustrator because I totally do. I mean, yeah, I think, illustrator, <laughs> I think of an illustrator as being someone who's more, I mean, I guess there's a lot of types of illustrators in different genres, but when I think of illustrator, I think of someone who's more well-rounded in, uh, you know, can draw a coffee cup or draw a computer or draw a lamp or draw a dog or a cat or a bird or a house. You can do all that. House. You can do all that. Right, but <laughs> I can, but it doesn't come as easy. It's like more... Well, it doesn't always come that know. easy to... Of other people that call themselves I mean, illustrators. <laughs> I think of myself more really like an animator. Yeah, I can you know, see that I think too. of myself yeah. like more as a And then there's people that do illustration. They do like food illustration or they do mm -hmm. medical illustration yeah. or they do comic books or cuz like what you do I consider illustration. But yeah, I don't I guess I'm an illustrator, but I don't think of myself as one. I think of myself as a character designer. I think of myself as a window painter. Like yeah. it's like yeah. I mean, there's so it, many subsets and everything, but I mean, but I, you know, there's like you had mentioned, there's window painters out there that don't do characters. They mostly do you know lettering. So there's probably even more people that are like lettering window painters or. I mean, you kind of do both. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of just the whole, like how to, how to categorize yourself as an artist. It's just so, such a weird thing. Some, a lot of times what I'll do is somebody asks what I do is I'll just, I'll say an artist and then, uh, and then, I, then I'll kind of dive down a little because people don't know what any of that means. I mean, I could tell, you know, then I say I do illustration and graphic design. And yeah. Then, if I need to, I'll, I'll dive even deeper than that. I do comics, and because you know, it's just like if you, you know, I used to say I'm a cartoonist, but then it's like they think you draw like the classic syndicated cart. Oh, you what newspapers are you in? Yeah. And, and you know, that's not the only kind yeah, of comics. Comic <laughs> What's that? I think of myself as a cartoonist too. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, or I should say, I draw cartoon characters, but really. I'm a window painter. I am the window painter. <laughs> it's like, mm -hmm. it's like, there's a, there are window painters that are illustrators. There's a lot of window painters that are sign writers. And I, I'm not a sign painter either. I don't think of myself as a sign painter either. Like people say, Oh, you're a sign painter. No, I'm not. I'm a window painter. I don't paint signs. I don't paint on wood. I, but then I also do black light walkthroughs and stuff like that too. So, it's really, I, I guess I could, instead of saying I'm not an illustrator, I should say I don't like to illustrate would be better. I don't like to do illustrations. I don't like to do like scenery or, you know, a picture of a houses with a car in front on the street with a bunch of people. It, right. that, that's work. I'd rather do like a, a fucking crazy tiger like on heroin with his eyeballs <laughs> and, like you know being chased by a bunch of bulldogs or something you know what i mean like just just the character 
Yeah, uh, well, I mean, if you talk to most comic book artists, they're like, oh, man, I wish I didn't ever have to do backgrounds or whatever. I'd love to just do the character. <laughs> yeah, that's stuff. true. <laughs> uh, yeah. But if you had to do it, you could do it. That's the that's kind of the thing. It's like, I'm sure there's nothing that you couldn't draw if asked to do so. You know, whether you want to do it or not, that's a different story because there's a lot of stuff I don't, I'd rather not draw either, but. I could do it, but it's really painful. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. me, it's really mentally painful. It's not just not fun. It's painful. Okay, okay. It's like I get these logos. You know, someone wants a logo like the doing that logo for the guys in New York. And, oh, my God, it's just like, ugh. You know, and it was a character, too. It's kind of a crazy character. I don't know what it is, but when I'm just free-flowing and, like, sketching, you know, a, a jackrabbit or something – it's just, it feels so normal and fun. And, you know, that's why this new series I'm doing is going to be all about that. It's going to be like characters and how to use your characters in your window splashes, mm. you know. But, yeah, we're all just so different. I mean, I you know, it's just. It's interesting how often us as like illustrators or cartoonists or window painters or whatever we want to call ourselves. How often we usually shy away from just being like, I'm an artist, <laughs> you know, which is like kind of the, I, I think that would be the best summary of like what we all do is just, we do art, you know, <laughs> like, um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I think of myself as an artist. I think of myself as a commercial artist or a fine artist. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I do both, but I just like teaching too. So many people are like, just so happy that I'm telling them this stuff. They really appreciate it. That is awesome. Well, it seems like such a specialized thing that it's good that there are people out there sharing it. Cause like, once again, I think if, if nobody was sharing it, like it, it, you know, have the potential to just kind of go backwards, you know? <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think that's one of the most important things about sharing that kind of thing is it, it kind of keeps that um, that method and that format and stuff like going, you know, which is good. Yeah, I follow a lot of sign writers too. They're they blow my mind. Oh yeah, they're just like they do that gilding and the gold leaf and yeah, <laughs> they're just like so crazy. Yeah, but I guess. I guess it's just good to do what you love. That sounds like something I'd love to learn is just like, I'd love to be able to spend like a year and a half just studying like lettering, you know, <laughs> like tradition. Yeah. Cause you've got that mind, you know, you've got that, that more, um, that left brain part of you. It's a lot power, more powerful than my left brain. <laughs> and it's like, but I'm kind of like a really nervous person. I'm really, um, you know, as I get older, it's not so bad, but, you know, racing thoughts and like, got to get it done. Got to get it done. It's all about yeah. speed, speed, go fast, go fast. Yeah. You know, are they going to pay enough or, you know, make it go quick. So, you know, it's just, it's so window painting was perfect for me. Yeah. So yeah, as far as illustration, you can see how that mentality wouldn't fit with illustration because it could take you a hundred days. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Whereas with me, it's got to be under a hundred minutes. It's like you're painting a window, and but then I would get into these big jobs too, and I'd really get into them, and they were so fun, and and they were they did become illustrations, some of them. Yeah, that actually sounds good, but that sounds really similar to like my experience in illustration, where you know sometimes you have a client with a really small budget, and so you have to budget out the time and be like, well, okay, how much time can I spend on this? You know? And then it's literally just racing the clock um, the entire time. <laughs> um, I don't know, but like, see, that's the thing that kind of appeals to me about the idea of retirement sounds so nice to be able to just kind of focus on the art that you wanted to focus on. Because I, I, I definitely find that, um, you know, having to be a part of like the rat race and like constantly be doing commercial work, it like does pull away from the stuff that I want to do. 
um, outside of it. Yeah. The idea of that, like not being a thing it's it's like both terrifying and also sounds extremely liberating at the same time <laughs> you know to me it is i'm just i'm yeah i'm just waiting i'm like i mean i'm not waiting i'm doing things i'm putting things away and moving things and audrey's saying we got to get this done i mean you got to get your cars registered she does all the smart stuff and nice. figures things out like okay we got to do this next and she's she's the one that's doing the house figuring out she's got to take talk to the BIA and she's got to talk to, you know, the tribe. And it's just like endless the amount of stuff she does. And, and so we're like a team, you know, like we couldn't have pulled this off. It could have been just her or me Yeah. together. We, I mean, we sold our house like, like in four hours of the opening wow. and she, you know, she's watching all these houses on fix, fix her up stuff. And, you know, we did a lot of stuff to fix up the house and we got like, fifteen hundred dollars more than we asked for like in four hours and we're like okay good and then we're just like you know doing stuff so we're still on the doing stuff stage but when things get ironed out i'm gonna have time to do everything i want i'm gonna be able to sculpt i'm gonna be able to do wind sculptures i'm gonna make videos i'm gonna do cartooning character design i'm gonna paint you know, I want to get into airbrush too. Like I want to get on, get into doing airbrush window painting, like really incredible illustrative, you know, pardon the expression, <laughs> very mm -hmm. illustrative window splashes with just really cool blends all, you know, it's just, yeah, the freedom of it is, you know, really enticing. Yeah. But right now, I'm, you know, still going slow and like the first thing I got to do, I got the glass on the side of the house. I've got, I'm going to mount a couple poles and just put it up and it's going to be outside, but it's on the, you know, one side of the house that doesn't get sun in the morning. So the lighting's good and I can just go out there and cause I paint outside all the time anyway. So, you know, on a good day, go out there and paint my rattlesnake or my uncle Sam. I mean, 4th of July is coming up. People would love to see a video on how to paint uncle Sam. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Or fireworks, you know, characters like the rockets I do with the faces, and but yeah, it's it's really nice. I mean, it's I mean at the same time, you know, wherever you go, there you are. So yeah. I bring with me all my usual neuroses <laughs> and psychoses or whatever that we all have. We take that with us. But generally speaking, the stress level here is like a fourth of what it was in Portland. Yeah. So that, yeah. And then that sounds like a really, so how, how recent, I mean, this was really recent, right? How recently did you guys move? Three weeks. Wow. wow. Yeah. It was really hell. It was one of the most hellish things I've ever done in my life. It was so painful. Not only were we fixing up the house and I'm not a mechanical fixer upper type person, <laughs> You know, I we I was doing plumbing and I was doing things that I don't do, and it was just constant, like you know, painting, painting yeah. the whole house, recarpeting. You know, it just it was so involved. So not only that, but then selling it and then getting all our stuff out. How yeah. did we time that? You know, how do we, how do we, how do we time getting our stuff out? Living in one room. And then, oh, people are going to come look at the house. Yeah. You know, before we had the open house, people would come and we'd have to take off. We couldn't be there. And it was just, it was really hard. And then moving the physical house, you know, the truckloads of stuff and getting it here. And and then now we can't find shit because we're like, you know, I don't even know where my sketch pads are. So I got to buy more. I know. We, like, almost, we almost didn't get you on because you couldn't find your webcam. So. <laughs> right, right, right. So we have stuff in these storage sheds that like we we wanted to hook up our air conditioner, right? And we forgot to tell my son when he moved stuff here to put the air conditioner on the outside of the storage shed. It oh, was on the inside. So oh, we wow. physically went there and had to take everything out. We almost just bought another air conditioner. Oh my god. So I mean, there's stuff like that. But still, even even the stress of those things are nothing compared to because before they were deadlines and then getting our electrical, you know, we had to, and then they had to come and dig a big hole in our backyard and fix some pipe, 
you know, before the house could sell. And, and then they had to like, the electrical inspection failed three times and, and, but we're supposed to close in three days and just, you know, it's painful. Yeah. But then, but then now we got free rent and we got a bunch of money. So, yeah. So I guess, and, and really no, no critical deadlines like that. Yeah. But even before we sold the house, even before we sold the house, it was, it was challenging just living there and, you know, coordinating and doing everything and paying the bills. And so. Wow. That's cool. We, we did have, we had a question in the chat and I'm, you know, uh, I might be a good one for you, Scott. Um, but it's uh so Mighty Pegasus Art, at what point do you consider that a project is too small or underpaid for you to refuse it? And do you feel afterwards that you should have taken it anyway, regardless of their budget? I could, I could, I, I'll, I'll answer the second part of that real quick. I've never, there's never been really a job that I turned down because I thought it wasn't enough and regretted it. <laughs> so, but, um, but I don't know, what about you guys? Yeah, I've taken jobs where I've regretted it, or I, but it's mostly because I do too much. Yeah. Because once I'm painting, I forget about the money, and I just want it to look really cool. Yeah. You know, I want, like I did one, you know, with Godzilla melting. It was on Christmas, and he had a Christmas hat, and he's melting the snowman, and the snowman's running, <laughs> being melted by a radioactive flame, and Santa's saying, Something like, that's not nice. That's naughty, Godzilla. <laughs> You're going on the bad list. Something like that. I mean, I get into making things, weird, fun things, you know. Yeah. But but sometimes I do kind of, I regret or I do resent people that try to take advantage of me. And sometimes I just don't go back. You know, in my later years, I just like, I don't like you. <laughs> you know, or they... I just, you know, I could kind of afford to do that, but then sometimes I'd have really slow times too. And I just yeah. kind of do whatever. Yeah. I've, I've definitely been there where I've taken, but I've taken jobs that, that paid uh, less than I'd like just cause I didn't have anything going on. And like I said, I usually oh, yeah. sort of regretting it. Cause it's like, if it's to that point, it's almost like I'd rather just work a day job and do my own art on the side. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, because you know, I don't know. I, I just thought I just kind of value the art that I do. You know, I you know if I'm if I'm gonna get paid less than I'm worth, I'd rather just just work any job and not give away. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but like kind of like what you were mentioning, there there are times where I'll take on a job and then I'll, I'll I'll end up liking it so much I'll put a little more effort into it or a little more you know than probably what it's paid what what I, what I quoted for. So there's those times, but, um, but yeah, just, I mean, we could do a whole other episode on just pricing, but uh, I mean, there's, that's a pretty big topic, but I mean, you kind of, you know, I, I'm still, I'm always of the opinion that, you know, if it's just a matter of getting, not even your foot in the door, but just honing your skills or whatever. I'm all, oh, yeah. I'm always of the opinion of kind of, do you can do that on your own time. You don't need a client to, to justify you learning like kind of on the job type thing for, for not a lot of money, just, you know, do something else and, and do your own stuff on the side because that, and that's that once you get some really good stuff that you're creating, even if it's for yourself, people are going to see that. And I think it's that hopefully that'll start bringing in your work rather than some job that probably not that great, but. Yeah. Yeah. And I, th I think um, the only times I've really regret regretted, uh, a really low pay on a job is mainly the reason that I don't, you know, I, I don't underquote myself. I think that's as, as you get into it, you're going to learn better what to quote and what something takes because part of, I, I think one of the hardest things to get used to, I see this all the time with juniors too, um, or, or like, you know, early designers that I'll hire or illustrators and stuff like that, where it's like, um, it, one of the hardest things that you definitely don't see in a senior artist or a senior designer or a senior illustrator that you see with 
with early ones is like underestimating or overestimating the amount of time yeah. it's going to take to do something like people who've been at this for a while get a really you get you start to get a better gauge of like what you can and can't accomplish and what that will cost you and so like the cool thing about hiring like a seasoned artist is is that you're you're going to get an artist who quotes your rate and that's exactly what what they'll deliver and not only that they'll quote you a delivery time and you'll get it <laughs> whereas i think with with younger artists it's it's tempting to like be like well i'm competing so i got a price low for competition and then like you end up in, in, you know knee deep in a job that doesn't pay enough because you didn't quote them what you needed to get for that job does that make sense i hope that makes sense i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. So it's yeah, sometimes I'll just do, I'll take a job if it's fun and, mm -hmm. and I'll just do. I just think sometimes oh this is the only thing I'm doing today. I'm only making 150 bucks, but I want to do this and I want to do that and, and then I tell them I go, this is 300 dollars just so you know. Yeah. So next time if you want this it's 300 but it's only 150 because that's what you. You know, that's what we decided on. I would yeah. do that a lot. I'm really weird when it comes to pricing. Yeah. And, and then it's hard sometimes because I'll get the job. It might be $100 and then they want extra and I keep going and I start to resent them. And then I, and I, I, maybe, maybe I'm not there the whole day, but, but then I start comparing it to like when I did uh, 10 Arctic circles for $250 a piece in one day and I made $2,500. I start, comparing yeah and i can't do that because like i want to tell a guy you know our circle paid me twenty five hundred dollars in a day and you're paying me a hundred for four hours it's like but you know i'm responsible for all that you know yeah. i'm you know i don't have to do that i could you know it i guess because i just love drawing characters again cool. it always comes back to that and so i figure a lot of people can't afford the characters and the time it takes to do something really cool, but I want to do them anyway. So then yeah. I'll be like, yeah, it's only a hundred dollars, but I'm probably going to do more. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, think, I, think I think it's good to let them like, know. Oh, that looks really good. <laughs> let them know that they're getting the deal. So then next time it rolls around, it's kind of like, so just so they know, because the, the one, the, the bad thing about not charging it enough is that, you know, you, become known for that and and then other people oh you only charge this person this amount or whatever so you don't want to get in that trap right. and i've told that to i've told that to clients before i said you know i'm going to do it for this price but just so you know i mean if anyone else like if somebody asks you what you paid for this don't tell them what i'm what i'm charging you because yeah. i can't afford to do that for somebody else so yeah and i i think that what what Scott um, both Scotts were actually kind of getting at too is really important um, because it's like it, it if you can kind of go the extra mile for your customer you should you know like especially if they're paying you to do art everybody's got their own budgets and stuff and so like just because they have a smaller budget um, yeah if you're enjoying it and you want to put in you know like 110 percent that's your prerogative you know but what i'm getting at is more just don't underquote yourself and get yourself in a mire where you end up you know regretting um because you've poured you know 20 hours into a job that's paying you for five you know um yeah. like that hey can you hold on for a second i'll be right back yeah yeah can you hold on for a second yeah so i'm i'm while you do that scott i'm gonna just address the the chat so unmask art was asking he's uh, he came in late and he wanted to know what the consensus was if artists can truly retire and i don't know if we totally answered that i think it's kind of like it's kind of it's kind of a a, a larger you know um kind of thing i mean it's just uh I guess the idea is that, yeah, I think you can, like Scott has kind of moved away from doing commercial work, but he's not going to give up drawing and creating. He's still yeah. going to do that. And he's not, and he's, and he's not going to end up, you know, trying to make art for money in other ways. So, so I think that's kind of what we're talking about. It's kind of like, yeah, do you, I mean, would you really want to retire totally? Cause a lot of people, you know, it's, it's different for artists because I think people that work like a job, like if they, 
if they just have an average job where they're kind of working for the weekend and yeah. they could care less about their job, they're definitely not going to think about their job on the weekend. I mean, that's what they want. That's what they're looking for. Yeah. So in that kind of scenario, once you retire, it's like, oh, now I can do all the things I want to do. But for artists, I think we're pretty much already doing the kind of stuff we want to do. So it's just a matter of, you know, can we, can we do that? Is there a way to, you know, <laughs> continue living if we're not really bringing in an income for that or whatever. So, I mean, that's kind of, I think what we're getting at. I don't, I don't think there's a definite answer to that. But. Yeah. There's a lot of guys out there who like, they have this uh, junk car that sat in their backyard and they're like, when I, when I retire, I'm going to like, I'm going to build that, like, I'm going to make that restore that car, you know, right. like people are into mechanics and stuff. Yeah. We're just, if we're that guy, we're the guy who's been doing other people's cars forever but we have our own car as well and like so like the yeah so it's it's kind of like we've been drawing we want to draw we've been designing we want to design the beauty of like retirement in my mind that it just makes me really excited about it and and also frightened because it does put the onus on like there's no excuses at that point right you just like at that point wow you can actually draw whatever you want which is kind of amazing <laughs> If you take the money out of it, it's all about the money. Yeah. Like I don't Audrey's telling me we don't you don't need to make money. That's very different. Since That's I was 16, it was always money. Yeah. Gotta make money. But so it's kind of like if you take that out of the equation, what would you do? And so that's kind of what that's the world that I'm entering now. It's like I'm really excited about making new videos. I'm yeah. excited about drawing and learning to draw better and taking more classes from people like Aaron Blaze and and yeah. and then all and then using that information and teaching other people, you know, how to apply that towards their window painting. And just I'm excited about it because it's because I don't make shit on YouTube. <laughs> it's <laughs> like I make a dollar a day. Yeah, basically, basically. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like it's it is kind of like it's not that much. yeah, you don't but you don't look at it at, if you're looking at it like the benefit other than like we've already established we love we love making the videos and we probably do it for nothing but it's not you're not getting for most most part you're not really getting any money from YouTube from the advertising and stuff like that yeah. what you what you are able to do is is sort of build a community and a, a sort of a what you call it whatever you want a fan base or whatever or build you know a reputation or build a following um, so and then that I mean that's what's kind of feed that's probably a lot of that was kind of feeding your patreon so I mean if you can build an audience and YouTube is really good for that then then there's other ways to kind of you know yeah you YouTube's the foundation of everything yeah. it's like because everything springs from that even though it doesn't make money you know I couldn't have a patreon channel that makes 200 something a month if I didn't have YouTube yeah it's yeah it's really important but I just yeah I, I love the idea. I mean, this just sounds like a daydream to me, like, because I think, I, I think m most people who've been at this for a while, um, you, st it, it does start to get slightly frustrating when you're making money doing art. And, and once again, it's like, it's, it's, it's a good problem to have, <laughs> um, where it's like, you know, uh, I, I keep doing paid work, but I have no time you know, for, for my, the, the dream stuff. And, um, and so making time to do the dream stuff, like this stuff you want to draw, this stuff you want to create that might be more of a long-term risk or, or I guess a short-term risk and a, a longer term kind of goal. Um, those things just kind of sit by the wayside for the paying stuff because you have to kind of keep, keep the roof over your head or like feed the kids or whatever. Um, to me, right. it, it's, it's such an, in, I don't know, it just, it, like I said, it sounds really exciting and also horrifying. Because <laughs> like I said, <laughs> if you take money out of the equation, um, then then you are really left with, like, what do you want to make? And and I think um, for, I think particularly, like, I, I, I don't know if I'd have too much trouble <laughs> coming up with a long list of stuff. I wonder if, 
most I, I would almost think most artists like who've done this professionally for a while um would have trouble kind of coming up with well what now because it's like you have a lot of what nows that have probably accrued for years you know that you can now do which is kind of exciting you know yeah there's i i had there's no lack of things do you know who james gurney is yeah yeah it's like him you know it's like i watch his videos it's like i actually went and bought a a little setup you could take outside and do plain air painting. I mean, so, that would be fun to yeah. just do some landscape painting and, you know, like just try that out and see what that's like. And and I really want to learn how to weld. You know, I want to make big sculptures and like I want to make fiberglass, you know, like my van, but not on the van. Yeah. You know, big, crazy, freaky, weird, cool things. You know, there's just... You know, you know what I've been thinking about that I'd like project that I'd like to do, like assuming that if I ever do kind of move from this place, like if I, my girlfriend and I get a place and if it's big enough to do this, uh, I've been watching a lot of the, the stuff on the uh, the new Star Wars land that opened in Disney. And mm -hmm. like, I kind of I kind of want to build the Star Wars cantina. <laughs> 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 That'd be cool. Yeah. So I'm mean, I, I, cool. sure I could do it. I mean, I've done set design and stuff like that. And I've done done that kind of thing. So that that would be kind of cool i mean see um, i envy you scott because you're <laughs> more of a i mean you have like the ability to build things whereas i, I if i try to i can sculpt but i but i but if i try to do like anything that just requires like hammers and nails and stuff like my brain melts <laughs> and it's like not even and and like I've tried to fix plumbing in my house and ended up like fusing pipes and having to pay like five times as much for a plumber to fix it. Um, I'm just, I'm not inclined in that way, but I think like if there's anyone I know who could nail that, like and actually build a, a legit cantina, like I think, I think you could do it, dude. <laughs> Cause you got that fat would you, skill, you know? Would you hire people to dress up like that? I mean, who, well, I, mean, I, the... I kind of want to. I would. I would try to figure out how to do like either if I had to sculpt it, or if I can get decent masks or something. But I'd like to have the actual cantina band in there, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, well, not, yeah, like the not like animatronic or anything. I can't. I don't know if I could do that. But uh, but yeah, just like oh, yeah, the, have the props. Yeah, I thought that would be kind of cool. But I that would this, be so this, this would be contingent on like if my girlfriend would. Be down for that too i know she i know she'd like to have a bar in her house so there but, you go. but, to be <laughs> bar, I <laughs> but yeah I don't well, know. you could always have you could make the cantina but then you could like have the characters kind of in a storage unit next to the house that you could bring out once in a while certain ones or yeah and then play the music you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or anything like that or like uh you know if I, I just i thought like doing a uh um, like a, get one of those home theater things and maybe making it look like, you know, the, the a, like a Death Star or like Bridge or something crazy like that. But, but I don't, I don't, I don't, I've got a, I've got like a big screen TV over like in the living room, which I never use. It's just like, like I just don't watch enough TV or movie. And if I do, it's usually like in my bed before I go to sleep and then I fall asleep. So, so I don't know how much practical yeah. use that would be. But, but I, but I like to, you know, be cool to entertain and, and have a Star Wars bar or whatever. Oh like, man, and, and, and uh, parties like I, yeah, I'm yeah. In Arizona. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun for a Halloween party or New Year's Eve party. Oh yeah, walk into that. <laughs> That's kind of how I felt about art cars. You know, they're so fun to create, but they come with a lot of. Like to finish my van was a lot of work, but I wanted to finish it so I could sell it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, I I don't think I'll miss it though. You know, I stopped driving my art cars about four years ago when I stopped entertaining and this yeah. and that. But I would love to build my own UV 3D walkthrough funhouse thing. I would just, it could be for kids. I don't care. You know, it could be, just whatever, but to to have the time to sketch it out and do all the drawings of the walls and it would be like a comic book. In that sense, I would make a comic book 
I would make a a black light comic book that you would walk through. Like if it could be like, you know, unicorns and werewolves, but it's, <laughs> you walk through it and you read it, you know, you oh, know, you that's read. That's really cool. That's a cool idea. Really cool. Idea. Yeah. I was actually at an art show in Arizona. I mean, I wasn't physically there, but I participated in a show where they, every artist did a panel, you know, of the, like somebody somebody had this the idea of it it was something about aliens or something and each person did a panel of the comic strip and they made a painting of it you know it was really cool and it was a show in arizona i ended up get i didn't sell the painting but i ended up giving it to my uh my nephew lives in Arizona and I ended up telling him, Hey, this, if you go there, there's a painting there, you can have it. I didn't sell it. I don't care if they ship it back. But the one I did was, it was kind of two men in black characters. And in the reflection of the glasses was a baby. It was a baby alien or something, but it was really cool. But yeah, I love the idea of doing a comic strip. If it's big. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because then I, then I could do all the more illustrative stuff. I'm, I, that's a lot of it working big. But, I mean, how cool would that be to have, you know, werewolves and unicorn, but to have it like each page is a four by eight or eight by eight, you know, panel. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's UV3D where you wear glasses and it's, yeah. you know, split suspension. Oh, so I wasn't even thinking. I, I guess I didn't put the connection to 3D that it's like actually 3D with the glasses. I thought it was just, I'm thinking of like a dark ride, like like in Disney, like uh, Snow White Scary Adventure or something where it's the, the UV black light paint. But I didn't know that you can also do that and have it 3D. Yeah, chroma depth, it splits up the spectrum this way, you know, the depth. Uh-huh. It's not like, you know, like the glasses you sent me where it's red and blue. Right. Yeah, it's different. Okay. I love doing it. It's so it's so fun. And when people see it, if you've ever if you've never seen chroma depth, it's like when you see it, you're like you'll see something you've never seen before. Wow. It's so cool. Yeah, you could do like you know, I I used to go down every year to Southern California to the Discovery Science Center and I painted for them. They did a black light maze for their spooky science, you know, thing they did every year. And I'd paint it in five days. I'd have a bunch of people help me, a bunch of kids. And they would just give me the idea, like, you know, and uh, it was cool. Especially the bugs one, you know, like I love painting bugs and different characters. and But you could take a face of like, and it could be like, four feet by six feet tall face and you could paint the eyes you know blue so it looked like it goes back because blue is way back and then the red you would paint maybe the eyeballs they'd be popping out off the wall uh, and huh. yeah, it's just i'm gonna do it someday i'm gonna I may end up just doing a, like a Halloween thing that goes up during Halloween and then I take it down, but I'm kind of more, I want to do more of a kid's one though. Yeah. Cause there's always like haunted houses for people. Well, yeah, I know. think the comic book would be perfect for that, you know? Right. I mean, well, I wanted to do, I wanted to do one like really like for little kids, like, yes. you know, A is for Apple. Oh yeah. Got yeah. The, the poison witch, the witch gave it to, you know, the poison apple, B is for bat that flies through the air, C is for cat that, nice. you know, whatever. And, you, you know, it's like writing, you know, you would write it and do, you know, stuff for little kids because, but even adults would like it because once they see the illustrations and the UV 3D, yeah, they'd be freaking out going, wow, this is really cool. I've had all kinds of ideas for that. I, I don't know if I mentioned, I think before I mentioned one called Space Monkey I was going to do. And uh, it actually had a song, a nine minute soundtrack to it that I made. And it was kind of like, it was like trance music, it had that sort of trance beat, you know, you know, like almost like electronica or something, trance rave music. You know, it's like Space Monkey, Space, 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 Space Monkey. And it was, it was all about a, a monkey that got hit by 
you know, gamma rays and turned into, a, you know, the typical story yeah. turned into a super superhero monkey that traveled all over the universe and fought evildoers. And, <laughs> and, but it was a strip too. Like it was a, you know, a 40 by 50 foot walkthrough <laughs> and I had all the things mapped out and where I put the black lights and had the maze and this picture is going here and there and something I really wanted to do. And then the soundtrack would be playing, but it could also be like history kind of stuff or almost like, cause I did one, I like, I did a Ripley's believe it or not one for, uh, cause they got the licensing rights for it. It was for the discovery science center and it was really cool. It was a Ripley's believe it or not. And I painted all these different things. Like they had this thing about a giant pumpkin, you know, and I would, the boys sitting on top of it and I've got, you know, in so-and-so Indiana, you know, Joe Schmo, uh, grew the largest pumpkin or the guy with the big beard or, you know, just, I was, I did the chroma death walkthrough with all these Ripley's believe it or not things that I want it to be something people can read, Yeah, you know, rather than just like a haunted house where, I mean, they're, they're cool too. You know, they have all blood and guts and people jump out. But I think like, so, I think the most important thing with, with entertaining people is the story. Yeah. The story is everything. It's, it comes before the art. It becomes before the music and whatever. It's the bottom line. It's like what you guys do. The story is everything, you know, and I want to tell a story too. Yeah. When it comes to that form, the UV 3d stuff. I mean, I think it'd just be cool to make giant comic books. Yeah. You know, that you walk, you walk through the comic book. That's, you know, it's like I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to, I want to check it out. <laughs> that be cool. Well, you draw it, and I'll paint well, it. Yeah, my well, <laughs> my girlfriend has family in Reno, so if you do it, I might have to make a trip over there, and we can go visit her family and and check it out. So, yeah, yeah at, at one point, I'm definitely going to put together something. I mean, that sounds so awesome. It'd probably be like you know, you you can rent a tent you know, a large tent and you just get four by eights and you build your maze and then you put pieces of wood across the top with the black light. And then you have a, you know, you got to get some insurance and then you have, you know, you have your fire exits and all that, but yeah. you, but I could spend, because I'm retired, I could spend six months writing this, designing yeah. it, creating all the music, you know, you could have some kinetic stuff, things moving yeah, and just, a, an immersive uh, experience for kids, you know, and it could be like Christmas it could be a Christmas one too, but, but Halloween lends itself better to it, yeah. I think. And so that's, that's a big dream. I mean, my big dream, my really big, big dream <laughs> is a roadside attraction, Oh, you know, with giant cutouts with mechanical characters, you know, and on the outside moving with, lights at night you know with big arrows pointing like you know weirdest place in nevada or something yeah you know, there's a there's a really body really fucking crazy just weird you know just like and you know and then have a uv 3d maze and have a weird gift shop and maybe have a crazy art car and there's you a, know, and just, a way to uh i think it's past tucson but it's just called the thing and there's just all oh, yeah, I about that. yeah and i guess they redid it and I, I i forgot because i mean I, I wanted to check it out but then they totally i guess they totally redid it and like um it's supposed to be really cool so i want to uh you know i think that'd be a big good road trip for me okay. so um but yeah, yeah. i definitely want to check that out but that's that's and that, it, that kind of stuff is so cool the deal of doing something like that though that i would love to do is that you know, a lot of these things are just bogus. You know, you go in and, oh, whatever. You know, yeah. it's half alligator, half man. Yeah, whatever. But to do it in such a way that it blows people's minds. Yeah. Like yeah. when they come in, it's like way beyond anything they could even imagine to expect in some cheesy roadside attraction. Yeah. Well, that the, the, art, the artwork and the music and the, yeah. and the ambiance and everything would be so clever and so unique that it would be just like people would be flocking to it to 
to see this crazy UV 3D, you know, place with just, you know, special effects and optical illusions and, you know, make it worth, make, really make it worth their five or 10 bucks or whatever you charge for them to get in. Yeah. But that's my, that's kind of my ultimate dream. I mean, it'd just be, I've actually saw a spot in Fallon that I'd like to do that at. And it says available, it's these old buildings and stuff. I don't have the money, of course, but it's like at the juncture of uh, on the way to Reno or you can go to Carson City or Fallon. There's like a, a little juncture there and there's nothing out there. It's just that. And, but, that would be cool. Oh, God, it would be so just <laughs> – that would be the ultimate, you know, and just put on weird shows. And <laughs> uh -huh. I guess really at heart I'm an entertainer. You know, maybe that's why I like to make the videos. I mean, you saw the one. I don't know if you saw the one where I'm dancing. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, with all the, you know, it's like, because it entertains me when I see that. It's like, yeah. what the hell? This old man <laughs> dancing around in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> and some people are entertained, obviously. But, you know, some people are like. I probably lose some subscribers. <laughs> They're like, I want to learn window painting. And then there's some old man <laughs> dancing by some storage shed. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? But that's part of the fun for me. <laughs> it's like, you know, what'd you expect? <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. Dude, I can, I can imagine that being like, I, I mean, I could see like maybe the financial part of it would be tough to make work but the um but the technical part i i could totally see you within your wheelhouse like i i was just envisioning just the um level of like art and stuff you put into your art cars on in like a permanent like location I, it's like you you don't see roadside attractions with the, that level of like craftsmanship like the the skills you have to like fabricate and make those things are, are not like that's not a normal like average kind of skill um so it's like it, it i just wanted to say, to clarify that to anybody watching like um like check out scott campbell's uh art cars and and sculptures and stuff because like he's not kidding about the the stuff he would do at this place like he could actually make legitimately i could make an upside down waterfall yeah you know, come see, come see the world's first upside down waterfall, <laughs> you know, or, you know, just crazy stuff and, and, you know, just, and, and corny stuff too, and weird and funny stuff. And oh, I'd love it. I, I think that, uh, but I think the outside would be the funnest to have a giant mechanical, like just weird guy with big bug eyes. <laughs> come to weird. Welcome to Weirdsville, <laughs> the weirdest place on the planet. You know, it's just like that would be amazing. All weirdos, you're welcome. It's like <laughs> you can sell T-shirts like "Survived Weirdsville." You know, it's just yeah. like, who's not going to want to go to Weirdsville, Nevada? I mean, come on. <laughs> I love it. I'm sold on it. I'm I'm interested. <laughs> what is it when you set it up? Yeah, I want to. I want to see all these projects. So hopefully, you get a chance to, to do them all. But, <laughs> well, who knows what can happen? Maybe I don't know. Something could happen. Maybe I could run into a bunch of money somehow, or maybe I could be a host on a show or something and make a bunch of money, like be a host for an art car show or be a host on one of these things you see, you know, and make a bunch of money and then buy this property and. <laughs> And I could spend six years building it. It's like, you know, just work on it. Uh, you, could, you could dig underground caves, you know, with and you could line them with cement. So it's like Engine Joe's Caves at Disneyland, but but just with weird stuff and weird creatures inside and, you know, scary things too. And, you know, can you make it through the cave without running back, you know, and have weird sounds and freaky things and, but you could have goofy things too, and just I don't know. It's just I start thinking about it, and I, I go crazy. I just yeah. think about all the stuff. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, um, I mean, we could keep talking forever, but we probably should start wrapping everything up. So I don't know. If, is there anything else you wanted to add before we do start wrapping things up, Scott? 
Uh, just uh, people, be patient. I'm gonna be back making videos once I, you know, it still might be three or four weeks before I get into the regular teaching stuff again. But once I do, I'll be doing a weekly video and just you know check out my YouTube channel, you know, and visit me there and watch my videos. All right, cool, cool. Uh, all right, so uh, Josh, you wanna uh, anything you wanna promote? Oh, let me uh, let me turn off my. I was trying to turn off my screen share here. Um, there you go. Oh, the devil. Okay, am I back? Yep. All right. Um. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys the chats here. Um. Let's see if this will work. Did that work? Okay, I'm back. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. I just wanted to say uh, thanks to Scott for joining us because uh, it's encouraging to me to like hear um your awesome schemes and plans and also just to like see that it is possible for um for a commercial artist to retire. That's really encouraging to me. Being at like I'm kind of <laughs> this whole thing and I'm like. Now this makes me have a very, like I have a finish line I'm kind of eager to get to because um, I'm like, that that sounds fun as hell. <laughs> um, and, and good luck moving and stuff. Uh, to everybody um, who, uh, you know, is, is listening and wants to check out my work, you can check out the comic that I hand letter, hand write, and hand ink, and then hand to you hopefully someday in print. Um, but until then, it's on quarterlystories.com. You can also check out my art at joshuakemble.com. And uh, you can go support the 100 Days of Making Comics Anthology. Um, you should go do that. So uh, there's a link right below, and Scott will be mentioning a link as well. But we're, we're getting really close to that stretch goal um, where we're going to have like a poster. Um, and we want to unlock that because, well, I, I selfishly want you guys to unlock it because I want a copy of that poster. It looks amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's it. Uh, Scott, um, what about you? Which, which Scott? Because uh, I, I, I we usually go over to the guest before we go to me, but Scott kind of already kind of pitched yeah. everything. But one more time, anything else, Scott? Your link is in the description. Uh, definitely, you know, Victor says he wants to check out your channel. You definitely should, Victor, because Scott's channel is great. Um, yeah, I, I mean, just does amazing, amazing window stuff, and I can't wait to kind of see this kind of next chapter, what he's going to be doing with these yeah. tutorials and things. It's going to be pretty awesome because he does amazing characters and lettering and every, all that stuff. So, and, and Scott's got a couple, I should put some of your other links. Maybe if I can remember, I'll go put them in after the fact, but, but like, well, in, you can go to dark right Yeah. Go to dark and you can see some of his sculptures and he does some crazy sculptures and art cars and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, multi-talented. So, Anything else that we didn't mention, Scott? No, that right, this is that. great because this is kind of a really good timing for me because it's given me a chance to sort of tell people, hey, yeah, I'm, I mean, most people know already, but that I'm in transition and to hang in there and I'll be back, you know, with the teaching. So, yeah, awesome. Awesome. And yeah, so you're, you're on my channel. So you, 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 you know where to find me. Um, uh, here and also at cirqueworks.com. Uh, but I don't want to talk too much about that. I want to, again, promote the Kickstarter that's going on right now for the 100 Days of Main Comics Anthology number two, Werewolves and Unicorns and Other Mythical Creatures. There is a link in the description uh, of this video. Just click on that link and it'll take you to there. And then please consider backing the Kickstarter. I mean, this is just an amazing book. Like, like I said, it's 28 creators. Uh, doing uh, four page stories centered around a mythical creature of their choice a lot of werewolves a lot of unicorns and but there's some other stuff in there too so um yeah and just all people from all different backgrounds and styles and everything so you're really going to get a really nice mix of people in there and uh and i've got a big part to play too i uh i, I did in addition to doing my four page story i also did uh the cover and i just finished writing the uh, forward, which at least the first draft, I'm going to, I'm kind of going to sit on it and, and kind of rework it. But so, yeah. So if you're a fan of my stuff, uh, definitely you want to pick this book up because it's some of it's, it's a little different than the, the stuff I do with my personal comics. So, um, and I'm pretty proud of the work I did. So definitely, definitely check that out. Um, and if you're curious about this show, if this is your first time at this show, we do it every week. 
um, usually on Thursdays around 9 o'clock uh, p.m. Pacific time, but that can change. Um, we'll see. I have to talk to Josh. It might change next week. I don't know. We'll, we're, I'm talking to, to somebody in the chat about maybe being a guest unless Josh has somebody lined up. But we'll figure all that out. But if you want to know exactly when we're going to be live and, and all that kind of stuff, the best way to do that is to sign up for our mailing list. And we don't spam you or anything like that. We usually just send a link out about 30 minutes ahead of time to know you, let you know what day we're going on, when we're going to go live and, and link. Because like I said, this or maybe I didn't say, but the, the show – um, it bounces back and forth from Josh's channel to my channel and then back again. So it gets you, it, it sounds like it gets confusing, but if you just sign up for that mailing list, you'll always know where we're going to be and everything. So it's real easy. So there's also a link in the description of that. In there's a link. So here's the links. You got links to uh, Josh and I's channel. You got links to the Werewolves and Unicorns uh, anthology. You got links to Scott's channel and a uh, link to the mailing list. So yeah. Just hit all those links. Sweet. And, uh, and again, <laughs> I mean, the chat was really was really go. I didn't get to address everything, um, and but there was some great stuff going on in the chat. So we always appreciate the chat. So thanks to everyone in the chat. And uh, Scott, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I gotta. I totally forgot to mention this because I keep forgetting I'm in a band. So oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, so uh, if anyone is in the LA area on the 22nd of, Ju of June, that's Saturday. <laughs> There is an awesome event. It's in the Antelope Valley, which is on the outskirts of LA County, but it's an all day thing. There's 17 bands oh. and uh, my band is playing. Um, and it's a, a festival called No Pants Fest at the uh, Trap Bar and Grill. Um, and it starts on 2 p.m. on June 22nd. So uh, so you can check that out like by looking for No Saboteurs on Facebook, but um, or, or just you know, checking out my Facebook and stuff, I'll be posting links to it, but that's coming up and it should be pretty chaotic and fun. So no saboteurs and no pants. Sounds, <laughs> sounds like a thing. Everyone go yeah. out there and do your best Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> Listen to some awesome music. <laughs> All right. Sorry. To, I just forgot to plug that. Yeah. All right. Thanks again, everyone. We'll, we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.